son of Goya. And it's uh, in a number of uh, parts. Part one. My father paints walls. My father paints walls because the daylight is malignant and his eyesight is benign. Because dead trees mock him. Because death's weather courts him. Because time's wife spits through cracks. Two. He has lost all worldly goods, all physical money. Where are the friends to comfort his idleness or cure his fear? The accumulations of humanness choke his breathing, yield no rest. All time is his. He paints his walls. Three. The king has commanded his demise, vowed to make my father wear an axe to scissor his eyes, set fire to his skin, all to scratch enemies' initials on his heart with a pebble and a rag. Four, because his nails are too short, his strength too weak, his breath too hurried, his bones too frail, his heart unsure to take his hands and paint their face, he paints his walls. My father paints walls. Five, on the walls are monsters, cities, men, gods, murderers, pilgrims, a witch, a spy, two rifles, a woman, a dog in the sand, these I see, these he lives. Poor father, housed in a private darkness, alone on another earth. Six, I am not against the darkness. I can learn to live with restraint. But nothing, nothing moves here in the ink, and nothing speaks. Nothing speaks in terror of its voice. Nothing but the oily voice of my father, animate in the darkness, where all things hold their breath. Seven. Last week, I returned home and entered the house of a deaf man, disenfranchised of patrons beyond the vile hearing of the world. I entered the house of Goya, the painter, self-abandoned, deaf to light. I entered the house and saw Goya sitting in misery, swallowed by darkness.